Welcome to DMV Gridiron, your home for all things DMV high school football. I'm Noah Schubert alongside Stephen Harris and Marquel Sanders, and the summer is behind us, but we're getting right ready for football season, aren't we? Yeah, we are. We are. It's going to be a big year. I can expect some big hits, some legendary plays. We're going to see what these guys have to bring us. And we got a lot to cover all along the DMV. We got DC, Maryland, Virginia, DMV stands for obviously, and we got a lot to cover from all three parts of our area for sports and I think all three of us have a lot of things to say about what we like and what we're hoping to see for the upcoming season. And now focus on Virginia in the 6 day class we're going to look at our top three teams and who else to look out for in this upcoming football season. Coming in at number three, we got the Centerville Wildcats. After a 10-3 2021 that landed them in the state quarterfinals, turning for the Wildcats, quarterback Brian Resto and wide receiver Thomas McCoy, but the star of the show, Villanova commit and first team all met running back Isaiah Ragland, who had almost 2,700 yards and 29 touchdowns in his breakout junior year, who's back for another senior season. Coming in at number two, we got the South County Stallions. 11-3 season, which ended in the state semifinals, they're bringing back a lot of key pieces on offense. At quarterback, you got Jeremy Frazier, running back, Ra Ra Wesley, and a wide receiver, Cameron Hoskins. Now, of course, they did lose first-team All-Met wide receiver Brock Spaulding as he graduated in this past June, but they're still looking to come back and compete. And at number one, we got the Madison Warhawks. Going 13-2 as a state runner-up as they lost to Stonebridge in the state championship down at Old Dominion University. Lost a lot of key pieces on offense, on quarterback, and on their offensive line. But Madison in the past few years have been able to get things done regardless, so we're expecting a big season from them. And our team to watch is the Fairfax Lions. A 9-2 season ended in the first round of the playoffs, an early exit for the Lions, who went 9-1 in the regular season and won their conference. They're bringing back quarterback Jake Worthen and Penn State commit at running back and linebacker Tony Rojas. Rojas is a key piece offensively with over 1,500 yards and 24 touchdowns to his name last season, but also on defense. Rojas, who's committed as a linebacker to Penn State, sat down with SASN at Fairfax High School training camp to talk about what it's been like as a commit and what's he, what he expects for this upcoming season. And now with Tony Rojas, running back and linebacker for Fairfax High School, recently committed to Penn State for football. Tony, walk me through that process. Tell me about your commitment. Um, so at first, I'd say it just felt like home. And we like have a tendency of here of making everyone feel like family. And parents and all of our like our athletes, we tend to be close as family. And it led me as to my decision because they're just more family. Besides, like Without me being in it, they just with my family, like my mom, they were just closest, so it just felt good. And talk about the support that you're getting from coaching staff, your fellow players. I mean, what are you feeling? What are you hearing, you know, from the team, from your coaches as you're getting through the commitment process and finally after you committed? Yeah, um, the coaches helped me a lot, uh, especially the coaches to my mom. She has, um, she couldn't take me to all these places, so my coaches drove me nine hours, wherever camps in the morning, wherever, so they helped me a lot. And then, um, I went camping with Dylan and Daniel almost all the camps last year, which helped me to get all the offers. So. Yeah. And running back and linebacker, both sides of the football last season, over 1,500 yards, 24 touchdowns on offense, on defense, just an absolute menace. There's a reason that you committed to Penn State, one of the best programs in the country. What are you going to be looking to improve, if anything, coming into this season? Yeah, uh, I think this season I'm playing, I'm playing real linebacker, so it's going to help me uh, focus and just get prepared for next, next season at Penn State and graduating early. So. I'm just trying to get better at the position and just learn the, the sights and all that. So. Of course, Fairfax High School losing wide receivers to and Williams and Amir Green, but head coach Trey Taylor says not to worry as he thinks the offense will be able to build around their starting quarterback and about some players who are going to step up offensively. And now with head coach of Fairfax High School, Trey Taylor. and Coach Taylor, after a nearly perfect season, went 9-1 and in the regular season, but won the conference but had an early exit in the playoffs. What are you looking to improve in this offseason as we head into the 2022? 
I think we're, we're looking to get further than we got last year. I think uh, we, had a, we had a good run. I think we surprised a lot of people, including ourselves. Uh, but then, as you mentioned, that early exit from the playoffs hurt. We felt like we were a better team than that. We only lost six seniors, so we're, we're looking forward to uh, bettering what we were able to do last year. And among those six seniors, two starting wide receivers, Amir Green and Zamarian Williams, that's over 1,100 yards on offense and 14 combined touchdowns. How is the offense looking to recuperate from those losses? I think uh, we, we have to fill in with, with what we have. We're not going to replace Amir or Z uh, with exactly what their skill set were, but I think one thing we're pretty good at as a staff is building around the talents that we have, and we obviously have some, some pretty good talents coming back. And talk about those talents on offense, Jake, more than second year as a starter after his junior season or his first year at the helm. What are your expectations from him? What have you seen from him in the offseason? Uh, that's the kid that I have probably the highest expectations for on the team. Uh, you talk about a kid that as a sophomore started at corner and wide receiver and did a tremendous job, but uh, jumped in at quarterback when we needed him kind of figured it out last year as the season went on. Uh, you look at our, our point totals uh, all the way up to Edison, we weren't scoring you know, 10, 13 points a game, and then all of a sudden we figured it out. So I expect even bigger things with Jake. He's one of the smartest football players I've ever been around, so I think he'll be able to be a coach on the field for us. And moving on towards kind of the defensive side of the ball, Tony Rojas, obviously an amazing running back, almost 1,600 yards, 24 touchdowns last season. But as a highly touted recruit and has he's committed to Penn State, what does that show for the team as how does that maybe motivate them or show that they can also reach those heights and, and go play big D1 football? Well, I'm not sure if they all can go play big D1 football, but we can all put effort out and that's what we talk about. It doesn't take any talent to put forth effort and uh, hopefully Tony's going to set the bar for those guys with his ability out there. I don't think anybody wants to let anybody down this year. That's what I keep hearing from the kids and I think everybody feels uh, the onus is on them uh, to do their job and I think if we can get 11 guys doing that on defense, then we're going to be pretty successful. And going back to offense, as I mentioned, Tony had a stellar running back season. What are we going to see from him on offense? Are you going to keep that same role? Are you going to elevate his role a little bit? What are we going to see from him? I think the addition of Braden Horsek uh, is going to allow us to do a few more things with Tony. We got, uh, you know, Tony's now the slower of our two running backs. Uh, so I think that's going to create a lot of issues for teams. But I think we're going to be able to uh, utilize Tony in some other roles outside of running back. He's still going to run the ball plenty. Uh, but I think we're just going to have a little more flexibility in what we're able to do with him this year. And do you think that an offense as a whole, losing two starting wide receivers, are going to go more small ball, do you think? Or is it still going to trust your guys to go out and catch footballs? You know, again, in credit to, to Coach Parker and our offensive staff, one thing I think we do really well is we're not set on, you know, every season we're going to run this much or pass this much. It's all based on who we have. And I think we have a, an experienced veteran quarterback coming back that, that can run the ball, which really hasn't been seen yet. You got Tony back, you had Braden, you had a couple more guys, and then a couple of returning guys that were out there last year. I think we're just going to be able to capitalize on the skill sets we have out there and play them off each other, right? If you're going to defend Tony, then we're going to figure out what to do with the other four guys to make you pay for it. And that'll do it for our top three and our wild card pick for the Virginia Class 6A football. And that'll do it for today's preseason rendition of DMV Gridiron. We've got a long season ahead of us, so be sure to check us out for the rest of the season as we break down the DMV football scene as we see it and as it goes on. For SASN TV, I'm Noah Schubert alongside Stephen Harrison, Markwell Sanders. We'll catch you next time.